Okay, so if you are remote learning, uh, today I wanted to go back over and just review uh, a little bit about the hand tools that you will be using out on the uh, floor and for this first project. But we're gonna start a little bit just as a review. We started talking about uh, hand tools, power tools, and equipment, the differences between them. So I mentioned that a hand tool uh, is basically just an extension of the human hand and the mind. So we've got the hand tool uh, as an extension of the human hand. So that's important to uh, know. Power tool as mankind developed and we got more and more sophisticated with our tools, we started to develop power tools. So uh, the big thing here with power tools is that they are portable. We can carry them with us, take them from one job site to another. Uh, that power source is generally either uh, battery operated or electricity. So they either have a cord that you plug into the wall or they have a battery. Now there are some advantages of both. Uh, if you have the cord and you're powered into an electrical outlet, you have a steady supply of the exact current. Uh, you don't ever really lose any power there like you would with a battery uh, operated tool. As the battery wears out, uh, that will eventually kind of wear down and you will start to lose power in your power tool as the battery drains. And you'll have to recharge the battery and replace it. So the electrical corded tools don't have that, so they're better at maintaining a constant power supply, but you are limited on your, your reach with them because you have to be close to a power cord or close to an electrical outlet. Whereas battery operated, you can kind of go a little bit further and you're not quite tethered by an electrical cord. So just some of the differences there between the two. And then of course we mentioned uh, last class period uh, in terms of our equipment. Uh, equipment is larger uh, tools. It's not portable. Uh, you're going to basically put it in place. So we mentioned uh, our table saws and our uh, CNC router, our work tables. Those are all some of the different types of equipment that we have. And there will be another video there. Uh, I also went through and we did a little drawing uh, a sketch of the shop floor layout. Uh, so that will be coming as well for you to know and follow that along so you know what all the pieces of equipment are that we have in the shop and, and where they're at. So then I broke this down into four different categories. Those categories, the first one was a cutting tool. So uh, we mentioned we have different types of saws uh, in terms of uh, manual tools. Uh, hand tools, we have a hand saw, we have the miter saw or the back saw, we've got coping saws, uh, we've got wood rasps, we've got files, we've got lots of different types of hand tools that cuts. When we have portable or the power tools, the cutting tools there, like your circular saw, a reciprocating saw, a jigsaw, um, those are all power tools that are cutting tools. And then of course when we get into our equipment, uh, we have table saws, we have the radio arm saw, uh, we have uh, routers, we have uh, joiners and planers that are all pieces of equipment that cut. So that's some of the differences there. So those are cutting tools. And we also mentioned uh, work folding. That's another area. This is anything that's going to hold your workpiece and allow you to have hands free so that you can do other things while your actual workpiece is being held tight, either clamped to a table or clamped to uh, uh, saw horses or whatever you're using as an area to hold your work. So we also have, in addition to uh, work holding, we have assembly and disassembly tools. So these are going to be your wrenches, uh, your hammers, your mallets, so your screwdrivers, so assembly, disassembly tools. And then also we've got uh, measuring, marking, and layout tools. So measuring, marking, and layout. It's important to uh, follow all of this. And the reason I say that is because uh, first we're going to measure, 
and we're going to take a pencil and make a mark, and that's going to give us a layout of what we're cutting as far as our project. So that's why I go measuring, mark, and layout. So first, we take a measure, but then we place our mark at our measurement, and that will give us an overall layout when we're using this. So now I'm going to show you. We're going to kind of uh, these are the main hand tools that you are responsible for being able to know and identify. These are what we're going to use for this first project. So this is the hand saw. So a uh, flexible blade. This is used, uh, there are different types of hand saws based on the actual tooth structure uh, that's there. So if it's a kind of a zigzag type tooth, that's called a cross cut saw. Or if it's a straight type tooth, that's called a rip cut saw, depending on whether you're taking a cross cut or a rip cut. Uh, typically when you use these, we have about a 15 degree angle uh, and your arm's like a piston where you're back and forth uh, with that. I'll demonstrate this when we get to that point. So that is your hand saw. The next one here, uh, the second tool is our, what I call a miter saw. It's also known as a back saw. So it has this uh, thin metal strip that provides a backer for the actual saw blade, stiffens it up. Uh, rather than cutting at an angle with this, the back saw is actually used and you're cutting uh, parallel with the wood and it goes straight back and forth like this. It's typically because it's a stiffer blade, a little bit shorter, uh, teeth are not quite as far apart, so this generally gives you a better uh, fit surface finish, more precision, you can uh, make your, these are largely used for trim molding, cutting angled cuts, so that you have nice precise cut with the miter saw or the back saw. So I'm gonna write both of those down here just so that you remember. So uh, these are the hand tools that you need to be able to identify. So we've got the uh, hand saw, and then we also have the miter or the back saw. There to use as well. So, and I also mentioned there's one saw out there in the uh, cabinet called a coping saw. That is the only saw, it's kind of shaped like a C, that's the only saw that cuts curves. And we'll talk about the six types of wood cuts later on in the course so that you get to know them. But uh, first, we're just going to be taking cross cuts, so we really need to only be aware and use the hand saw or miter saw. But I also want you to know another a tool that we use out there is the coping saw and that's used for cutting curves. Now in terms of our work holding that you're going to be using at first, we mentioned on each of those tables there is a wood vise. So, so we have what is referred to as a wood vise um, on each of those tables so that will clamp down and, and use. So we have different types of clamps. So and for us, we have C clamps. I'll show you that. So uh, here's an example of the C clamp. Just so you know what it looks like and identify it. Again, it's in the shape of a C as well. It uses a simple machine of a screw to help provide the clamping force, a nice tight clamping force. So that's the C clamp. We also have a bar clamp. So here is the bar clamp. So uh, this we can basically move this down back and forth to tighten it up. And then again, the screw tightens down and locks that in place. So that's a bar clamp. Let me write that one up down for you here too. It's a bar clamp. And then uh, lastly, as well, the other type of clamp that we have uh, that's a wood clamp, uh, these are called parallel clamps. And they're called parallel clamps because you have two pieces of wood that are run parallel together. Uh, you put your work piece between the two and you want these to stay parallel uh, as you clamp them down. So that is a parallel clamp. So those are the four main types of uh, work holdings hand tools that we have that we will use out there on the shop floor. Assembly and disassembly tools. On this first project, the tool tote, we're going to be using a hammer. Just a simple uh, 
a claw hammer. There are ripping hammers or claw hammers. There's all sorts of different design hammers for driving nails and for uh, other types of fasteners into wood. So, so we'll use a hammer. I also mentioned the difference between our mallets. So mallets are not used for driving nails. They have a softer surface, so you'll destroy a mallet if you try to drive a nail. So I mentioned that we have a wood mallet and we have what's referred to as a rubber mallet. I'm gonna show you those in just a second. So a wood mallet and a rubber mallet. So uh, here is the wood mallet right here. And this is the rubber mallet that we have. So now in the upper uh, level classes too, a good uh, wood mallet uh, is a sign of a good woodworker. And a lot of times that's one of the very first projects that a, uh, a woodworker will make for themselves is their own designed wood mallet. Um, so if you do take one of the higher level classes, you might have a chance to do that. Uh, last year, there were several of the students that made some really, really nice looking mallets that they used. Now those mallets are used in furniture assembly. Uh, when we have different types of uh, wood and wood joints that form together, kind of like a puzzle, uh, it's usually a tight fit and you use those mallets to tight the, tap those pieces together so that they come together and form a nice tight joint. It's called a friction joint where they'll stay together um, and won't fall apart if you cut it right. So and you use those mallets to kind of tap them in and make sure that you got the right fit for those wood joints. So that is the assembly and disassembly tools that we uh, will be using. We will also be using different types of measuring tools. So we mentioned our rule. We have several different rules out there, several different scales on those rules. So we'll talk more about the scale. So um, we have metric scales, we have US customary, which is the inch. And our inches are broken into a 1 8 scale, a 1 16 scale, a 1 32nd scale, or a 1 64 scale. And you might find a rule that has all four of those scales, or maybe it only has one scale. For this class, we require you to be able to read that tape measure or read that rule down to 1 16th of an inch. So, so that's kind of our common scale that we use. Uh, in here with our tape measures and our rulers is 1 16th scale. So now we also have um, those tape measures, I already mentioned tape measures. So, and then we have some specialized tools called squares. And I mentioned that there are two types of squares that I want you to know. So, uh, first type of square is the tri square right here. So now, this has a fence, what's called a fence, and a blade. And on that blade, uh, on the one side of the blade, it measures from the fence. The fence starts at zero and goes to eight inches. Uh, if you flip it over on the other side, the fence start zero starts at this end and goes down to eight inches. And that's so that you can kind of take your measurements from either side, depending on the orientation of the workpiece and how you need to use that. But, and then we will also be using this to check for square. When we make the cut, we want to check for square to make sure that we got a nice square cut there as well. So that's the tri-square. So that's going to be the one tool that we use is the tri-square. Uh, you can spell that T-R-Y. It is more commonly spelled uh, T-R-I and oftentimes with a hyphen in it. So that's the tri-square. And then we also have what is referred to as a combination square. Now your combination squares are called a combination square because it has a, a zero to 12 inch uh, scale rule on it. Um, in this case, uh, the scales, there's a eight scale. So I'm just gonna hold this up for you to see this so we can get this a little bit closer. Uh, you can see how the inches here on the bottom are broken up into eights. So that's your eight scale. Up top here, that one is broken up into sixteenths, uh, so that's your sixteenth scale. And if I flip this over, this is a Stanley, so on the other side, uh, I got the one scale that is a sixteenth up top, and then down at the bottom, you'll see how it's divided up into a lot more little notches and tick marks. That is our 32nd scale. So you actually, with this particular combination where you have uh, three different scales on that rule, 
but you also have the ability to lay out your lines at 90 degrees or at 45 degrees with this. Um, you can adjust this depending on how you need it. A lot of times too, there is a level. This one has got, been busted over the years, but a lot of times there's a level in here and there's also a little pin for a scratch all or something that you can measure and mark with the scratch all, make a little dimple uh, if you're growing a hole on location or something there. We'll talk about uh, that type of tool as well. So we also have these combination squares. No. And I also mentioned the scratch all. So we might need to use a scratch all to make a mark, or more importantly, uh, when we go to drill holes, we'll use the scratch all to kind of push a little indentation that's called a dimple. Uh, we'll make it a little dimple in the part uh, where that drill bit needs to go and where that hole, where we want that hole. That dimple helps to guide the drill so that it's on location when we drill those holes out. So, um, and of course your most important measuring, marking and layout tool that I mentioned uh, is a number two pencil. And I am strongly gonna say and recommend a number two pencil instead of the mechanical pencils, uh, instead of your carpenter pencils. Uh, the number two, we're gonna have that lead sharpened to just the right point so that we don't put too much uh, of a thickness to the line. And I just wanna show you when we do mark, so even with this marker, you know, I can make a thin line like that, or I can make a thicker line, something like that. So, uh, you know, if I use the full point of this, I can really make a, a thick line as I go through something. And that's gonna be important because the width of that line, when we're taking, how do you know? Do you cut on this side of the line? Do you cut on that side? Do you cut in the middle? Uh, if this one is a little thicker than the other one, then you're, that's going to affect the size of the board when you cut it. So we wanna make sure that we're using a number two sharpened pencil that has the right type of a lead point so that we can keep the line to a certain thickness and help make sure that it's just gonna increase our accuracy uh, and help us to make closer, more precise cuts when we're laying out the board for actual cutting. So, so those are the hand tools here that we're going to use for this first project. I want you to be able to identify each of those. So uh, hopefully now as you're looking back over this list, you have a mental image in your head of what that particular tool looks like. Uh, so that when it comes time for us to work on the project, you'll know where to go in the cabinet to find the tool that you need to bring it back and work uh, quickly and efficiently. And then you'll also know where to put it back when it's time to clean up and put tools away. So, so that's why one another one of the reasons why we want you to know the proper terminology of all this particular equipment and be able to identify it. So, so that is the lesson today. It's more of a review on the hand tools that we're gonna use here for the first project. So for those of you who weren't in class and uh, are remote learning, uh, we also went over the shop layout. So I'll be back with another video for you to watch on the shop layout and how to take care and identify the pieces of equipment out in the wood shop. And then we will get started into the board and doing a part layout uh, we'll using the board that we will be used to cut our toolbox. So it's still a couple more things that we have to go. We covered a lot of information today uh, and we will cover a lot of information. We do a lot of work in this uh, class. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying it. Uh, I'm, we're about there where we're going to start cutting and actually start building this here soon. So now that we're starting to get all of this paperwork and all of this knowledge and information down and over with uh, so we can start working. So, so uh, I'll be back, so watch, uh, be ready to watch my other videos uh, here as far as what we went through and went over in class today as well.